Satanam blessings once again it is my wonderful joy to be able to read another chapter from my book seeking success and happiness and uh, today's chapter is a little bit shorter so I would be a little bit freer with my time and also it's not like the marathon that we had in the previous chapter chapter 5 which was on general happiness today it's uh, quite specific I have had one or two questions uh, sent to me and uh, I would like to uh, answer them first of all someone actually asked uh, Dasingji, how long is your beard I, I didn't know what that had got to do with my book but well my beard goes right down here and um, yes I have never cut my hair uh, because this is for me my explanation is that this is my attachment to my guru I've got no other explanation it is my attachment to my guru attachment to my past attachment to my traditions um, in fact I must make mention of this episode so I hope you are all relaxed and you are able to listen to whatever I have to say uh, uh, first of all hang on Jimmy, I hope you don't mind <laughs> all right that's how long my beard is so today I'll keep it open in fact a friend of mine said uh, Dayasinghi now that you are turning 70 shall we start calling you Santh Baba Dayasinghi and we had a good hearty laugh because to me spirituality Sikhism is something I enjoy it is part of the fun of this beautiful life that I have been bestowed with but this is my attachment my hair turban my beard these are my attachments I um, I was on a visit to Bangkok when a friend of mine took me to this uh, particular pagoda in um, it's about a hundred kilometers I think south of Bangkok and the main statue in that pagoda is Buddha holding his top knot with a knife in his hand waiting to cut it off and the story they have there is that uh, to Buddha the shaving of the head the removing of hair was the ultimate sign of detachment from this life and I found that very interesting and I thought wow that's the reason why I keep my hair because it is my attachment to Guru attachment to Vaheguru through the Sikh way of life so that is the reason why I keep my hair and uh, then uh, there was a second question which I have now forgotten but we'll forget about that now when I remember it I will let you know but keep asking questions I'm more than happy to give you answers uh, oh yes the, the 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 film the serial that I've mentioned once earlier Buddha strangely enough in that serial right up on his cremation pyre Buddha actually has his hair complete with a top knot on his head if you have seen that serial so there are different variations of uh, what Buddha uh, was like in his lifetime so this is the chapter on the sick way of happiness this is one of the concepts and it is chapter 6 the chapter 4 5 is general happiness and chapter 6 chapter 6 happiness the sick way the word is Santok uh, you will find Sikhs with the name Santok Singh this is what Santok stands for the word Santok plays a significant role in our scriptural records as a precursor towards genuine happiness in simple terms it is a state of contentment Thal Vichtir Vastu Payo Sat Santok Vicharo this is on page 1429 of the Guru Granth Sahib Ji the explanation here simple one is this dish this platter referring to the Guru Granth Sahib 
contains three main ingredients the truth contentment and discourse contemplation on life contentment the closest english word to describe santokh is described by most dictionaries as a peaceful kind of happiness in which one rests without desires even though every wish or materialistic yearning may not have been gratified let me repeat that even though every wish or materialistic yearning may not have been gratified to be happy with one slot that is what contentment is santokh on the other hand must not be looked upon as a product of helplessness defeat or coming out second best unfortunately contentment has a negative connotation in general indian thought it is similar to the negative connotations in the law of karma inactivity is sometimes explained away as being one's lot one's bad karma instead of increasing one's effort to progress there is a tendency to try to appease the gods with offerings penances and other rituals to clear one's bad karma putting in optimum honest effort to better one's status and ever moving godward towards good is the way santokh is the starting point the launch pad one needs to be able to firstly stay in an optimistic upbeat state thanking vaheguru for what one has already been gifted with like a sound body a good mind a good family and so on and then to strive for betterment ben gur karam na chut si kai sun aankh vekha without the grace of the guru they are not released from their karma although they speak and listen and preach and explain this is on page 56 of the guru granth sahib our task is to keep heading godward and striving but we should be detached from the outcome which is left to vaheguru to his gracious benevolence also never take credit for the successful outcome because that leads to arrogance and ego the above leads to gurka shabd katay kot karam page 1195 The word of the Guru's Shabad, him, eradicates the karma of millions of past actions. For the Sikh, this means devotion to Gurbani, the word of the Guru. A Sikh stays close to the Guru, which is the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, reading the verses Gurbani with him as often as possible, singing it, reflecting upon it, listening to discourses of it, understanding it. living by it and being elevated in the process in humility develop a sense of develop a greater awareness of your spirituality develop a greater awareness of your spirituality by spending time in soulful reflection and meditation recently sorry i'm diverting again recently i came across the actual meaning of the word namaste for example i did not know that namaste actually means may the divinity within me recognize the divinity within you what a wonderful greeting that is here there's a quotation from the guru granth sahib page 12 bhai prapat manuk devriya va bhai prapat manuk devriya गोविंद मिलन की है तेरी बरिया लेट मी सिंग इट टू यू भई परापत मनुख दे होरिया गोविंद मिलन की है तेरी बरिया लेट मी एक्सप्लेन द मीनिंग फर्स्ट इट विल बिकम इवन मोर सिग्निफिकेंट यू हैव नाउ बीन बेस्टोड विद दिस ह्यूमन लाइफ फॉर्म दिस इज योर अपॉर्चुनिटी टू गेन यूनियन with the source of all reality the truth vaheguru god god almighty the creator whatever you like to call it this is the opportunity of becoming one in this life form 
एहो तेरी बरिया एहो तेरी बरिया गोविंद मिलन की ए तेरी बरिया पई परापत मनुख देहुरिया गोविंद मिलन की ए तेरी बरिया what a beautiful shabad this is it's from the evening prayer rehras though the law of karma states that one has to pay for past bad deeds if i keep wahe guru ever present in my mind in loving adoration and gratitude through simple meditation and selfless service towards fellow humans human beings then bad karma can be erased by his grace his grace is called nadar or as in guru prasad good actions can actually change the course of my karma one must make the effort uddam and his grace shall flow uddam karendya jiyo tu kamavya sukh punch guru granth sahib page 522 uddam karendya jiyo tu kamavya sukh punch make the effort and you shall enjoy peace and happiness the effort is towards doing good helping fellow human beings in whichever way you can and also heading godward santokh must be treated as a positive force not a way out for failure santokh means that one has enough of what one needs that he or she can genuinely do without more or genuinely decide that one does not need a great many of the materialistic comforts we are so used to or see others enjoying and in fact be happy it is a lofty attainment it includes gratitude for what we already have been gifted with do not undermine counting one's blessings because this attitude opens the door for greater bounty to flow your way i take my own case i ask myself am i in a state of santok am i content without contentment being or not without contentment being an obstacle to strive for further betterment am i in santok i was an accountant a mediocre one at that fortunately i was born in a family where selfless service unto others regular prescribed prayer and some form of meditation was a norm so expressing gratitude for my lot and staying in an upbeat frame of mind came quite naturally after the indian army attack on our golden temple complex in amritsar punjab india in 1984 I felt the elements pushing me in the direction of my spiritual music at the expense of what is called a normal home life and a normal 9 to 5 job. I found myself thrown into the uncertain world of depending on Sikh organizations, Sikh congregations, folk festival, arts festivals, gigs, worldwide travel and staying out of suitcases. The venture even drained my resources. but the elements looked after my family and i i even reached a financial crisis but continued to believe to have faith as my music developed and progressed the elements changed my circumstances including sending some kind benefactors who believed in my work and what what i was striving to do at the point of writing i have moved into a log cabin type accommodation which i have always dreamt of with some land around it with a view to transforming it into a mini retreat where like-minded friends can also come and stay for brief periods and join me in meditation and other spiritual self exploration yes i certainly have some talk i am very fortunate yet i wish to spread the way of life that i prescri- prescribe to others because i strongly believe in it and wish to share it with others uh again I would like to mention that this book was written when I was in that log cabin and we have since moved again again because of circumstances but my santokh has not changed it brought me problems but we were able to resolve them the guru ji has been very kind to me because I continue with the work that I was blessed to do contentment should not be a deterrent for one's lofty aspirations contentment should not be a consolation for non attainment but a positive 
powerful force, a launch pad for further progress and success. I do not wish to keep up with the Jonas's next door. I am genuinely happy as I am, and I am grateful to that source of all reality for gifting me with the power of music, which I enjoy and which brings joy and upliftment to those who hear it. It has allowed me to travel around the globe. I have made friends all over the planet. I am grateful that this music, that this gift of music, and helping others, allowed me to move out of a nine-to-five job, which did not really suit me. I am grateful for a lovely family. I am grateful that I am healthy without having to depend on medications. I can walk. I can run. I can see. I can smell the roses. I can eat tasty dishes. I can enjoy all that the world has to offer, and finally, I can sleep peacefully at night. In conclusion, I give thanks for all that I already have. That is contentment. That is santok. Another quotation from the Guru Granth Sahib, page five hundred and twenty-two. One of my favorites, actually. Nanak satgur petiye puri hove jogat hasandya khelandya penandya khavandya vichche hove mukta. The explanation is, O Nanak, God has gifted me with all I need in laughing, in playing, in wearing good clothes and eating tasty dishes. In other words, within all that the elements have gifted me with, there is emancipation and happiness. Uh, let me narrate a story from my homeland, Malaysia. My childhood, from, my childhood is from a small town. There lived a young Sikh who was not able to continue with his higher studies because of poverty in the family. Around 1960, as a 25-year-old, he took over his father's business of keeping milk cows, goats also for milk, and poultry for eggs and meat. He also had a small market garden, in which he grew fruits and vegetables, mainly for home consumption. His business started flourishing, yet he always delivered milk in a huge drum, tied to the support bars behind his bicycle. He lived a simple but comfortable yet hard-working life, raising two sons and a daughter. One day, I believe it was around 1965, he won a raffle from his son's school, a Mercedes-Benz motor vehicle. Against all advice, he sold it. His reasoning was that he did not need such an expensive vehicle with expensive maintenance. He did upgrade himself to a motorized scooter yet delivering the milk in a large drum tied now to the support bars behind the scooter. We did not know what happened to the rest of the family fairly substantial monies from the proceeds of the sale of the Mercedes Benz. Rumor was that he had gambled it away. In a few months, the local Gurdwara, Sikh place of worship, received a substantial sum of monies for much needed renovation and expansion of the buildings from a reputedly well-to-do overseas seek. Years later, as this man grew older, he upgraded to a utility vehicle in which he delivered milk, eggs and live chickens as required. His sons went on to become a lawyer and a doctor and the daughter became an accountant. His now grown up children, adults, tried to move into a large brick house from his ramshackle wooden country shack near his beloved cows, chooks and vegetable and fruit patch. He contributes generously with free farm produce like eggs and vegetables from his garden to an orphanage and an old folks home nearby. He also helped the local Hindu community by contributing generously towards helping them build a Hindu mandir in his locality. In 2005, I went to visit him, still in his ramshackle shack, now an old man, Yet still very fit and doing some market gardening in his own small plot of land. The cows were no more, but he still had some poultry. Have you heard this story before? I've read it. Oh, you have read it. <laughs> Firstly, I found out that he had donated the rest of the sale of his raffle price, the Mercedes Benz, to the local Gurdwara. There was no rich foreign Sikh donor but he had ensured that no one knew the real identity of the donor. His reasoning for the donation to the Gurdwara was that it gave upliftment, joy and solace to all those who attended the services and other activities. 
even for himself and his family. There was no reason for anyone to know that he was the donor. That was between him and his guru. Secondly, he said he had always been genuinely happy as he was, Santok. He wanted nothing more. That is Santok, contentment. He just wanted to and found great joy in being of service to those around him. As he had set his heart in being giving, the elements had helped him along. The following anecdote which I read somewhere is also relevant. A rich American tycoon went to a poor seaside Mexican village for holidays. In the village wine bar, he struck up a conversation with the local fisherman who was playing the guitar and singing for free. He informed the fisherman that he had come down for a few days rest and recreation and hoped to do a spot of fishing too. The two got on very well. The tycoon asked the fisherman how he spent his time. The fisherman told him that he gets up early, mends his nets and then takes his boat out the whole day catching fish. He comes back in the late afternoon, sells his catch, spends time with his children and later in the evening he comes to the wine bar before retiring for the night. The tycoon asked him why he did not expand his business. That's the natural thing to do. He could spend some of his money by buying another boat and renting it out. Then another and another. Finally, he could open a fish processing and refrigeration plant and export his fish to USA. The fisherman countered by asking him why he should do all that. The tycoon said that he could then become rich and retire. The fisherman asked, then what will I do after that? The tycoon said that he could then spend his day fishing and playing his guitar and singing. The fisherman said, but that is exactly what I am doing right now. <coughs> Such stories are perhaps simplistic, but we need to get our priorities right. Financial security is important. But as human beings, we are sometimes not able to decide when enough is enough in pursuing wealth and instead pursue those activities that bring fulfillment and happiness, not only to us, but to those around us. Greed, the wanting of more and attachment to materialism can be big deterrents to being genuinely happy. Western ideology encourages one towards wealth accumulation for oneself. The belief is that if you have enough material wealth, you can buy the things that make you happy or move in society that bestows more prestige upon you. The East encourages one to be humble and to be of service to fellow human beings. The two need not be combined towards, the two need to be combined towards success, fulfillment and genuine happiness. Research at Harvard shows that if one is happy, one's work is of a better quality and hence the rewards are greater. Happiness produces wealth not the other way around. There's also great joy in giving. One needs to look for ways and means of giving. Happiness is in giving. True wealth is the amount one can do for others and that is true happiness. Santok encourages one to be giving. This chapter goes back to the very first premise for happiness, to convince yourself that you are already happy, to feel happy immediately, to decide firmly that you want to be happy and are determined to be happy that you are going to adopt a cheery complexion and treat everyone around with cheerfulness. That you are not only going to be happy, but in the process, make everyone else around you happy. Santok encourages one to be happy immediately because one does not have to earn or buy happiness. It is there for the taking. Once again, smile and say to yourself, I am happy. Closely related to the concept of Santok is acceptance. This is again not a sign of weakness, but rather, an, rather an expression of faith in the hand that one is dealt. To deny that, to constantly express regret, as has never reversed the results, and therefore the only outcome from expressing regret is illness, weakness, fatigue of the body and mind. By surrendering to the will of God, one is stating that there is contentment in the present circumstances. This frees the mind and body to tap God power more freely and receive his grace. That is why we often see the carefree people around us enjoy much more success because those who study harder, work harder, 
often sabotage the fruits of their effort by being consumed with improving their predic predicament. In other words, they are not carefree. They do not accept the hand that is dealt to them and waste their life chasing the impossible. They never attain peace of mind. They never find happiness no matter how hard they work because someone else is getting even bigger rewards. Right, that is the chapter. Now exercise six. Once again, follow the exercises. I think it helps you to relax and also elevate yourself in a state of gratitude. Gratitude for all you, for all that you already have is the first step of, into happiness. Relax and feel comfortable. Feel what you have now read. Feel gratitude. Gratitude for a healthy body, eyes to see, ears to hear, tongue to taste, hands to hold, legs to walk and run and so on. Feel gratitude for supportive family members and friends. Feel gratitude for a roof over your head and food to eat. Feel gratitude for everything else you can think of that you possess. Now reflect on what service you can provide to others as a payback for all that you have. You are now ready to strive for further excellence and ready to provide some form of service to those who are in need. Your true dharma. You are now in the happy state of Santo. Thank you. Once again, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for joining me in this wonderful journey and uh, going through this book. I have had tremendous pleasure in writing it almost over 20 years. And now to be able to read it to you is a real pleasure. Once again, thank you to sicknet.com for allowing me this opportunity of archiving the book in this fashion and I also once again thank Seek Youth Australia for all the support that they have been giving me. Again for all those in Australia at 5.30 this evening we will be doing Rara Sav again as a form of meditation. Thank you Vahiguru, blessings, Namaste, Salaam and I look forward to seeing you again very very shortly. My daughter has now come and sat beside me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is a bit of a surprise um, for Dad. Uh, Dad turns 70 on Monday, on the 13th, and we have always celebrated Vasaki on the 13th. So a bit of a story about that. My grandfather had just finished making the prashad um, for Vasaki in the Godora. He was a Gyani, as you guys know. And uh, just as he was taking the Panchpiare, was when he received the news that Daya Singh had been born and uh, thus the name Daya Singh. And to celebrate Vasaki all around the world, what we'd like to do is 12 o'clock, so this time on Monday here, which is Sunday night in a lot of other parts of the world, we're gonna kick off Vasaki with uh, a celebration by doing Jopi. Yeah. And Hustle and Kyan will be here as well, and we'll all do Joppy and then um, do an Odas for your birthday. So we want to try and get as many people as possible to tune in to uh, do to join us for Joppy on uh, on that. I will have a lot of publicity about it. I think Seeknet, thank you so much, Baiji Gurumastak and also Papaji uh, Guruka for allowing us yeah, to do this. Sorry Guruka, my beard is definitely longer than yours. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, they're helping uh, us do some publicity about it. Uh, I'll keep all the notes posted on uh, the Facebook page Daya Singh Friends and uh, Asia Samajar is also hashtagging uh, Vasaki Indoors so we will be uh, doing a bit of a spiel for them as well because obviously the, the idea is for all Sikhs around the world we are one Sikh nation and if we can get as many Sikhs all tuning into each other over the next few days for Vasaki and in celebration and in joy for the entire world and the entire globe. I think as a seva, that's the best thing we can possibly do. And what I'll probably do is on the Daya Singh Friends Facebook page as well, is I might get Kian to help me make some brashad. Oh yes, if I, if I have one wish 
because this Vasakhi we are not able to move out and go to Gurdwaras. One wish this Vasakhi which I desire is the whole family, every child, every adult, male and female, learn how to make prashad. Please learn how to make, sorry, make deg, which then converts into kra prashad and after it has been served, it becomes gaphe. So I will also give an, an explanation as to what's the difference between deg, kra prashad and gaphe. Every Sikh, young and old, should know how to make prashad. I think that is the one thing I would like you all to take away from the Basakhi this year. Thank you. Okay, so 11.30 we'll make prashad and then uh, we'll do choppy uh, on Sikhnet uh, live Facebook stream. I might also noon. sing one Shabbat. We'll Just sit down and sing one Shabbat. And, uh, and Durano Das for the entire human race. So stay tuned. I hope you're enjoying the book. Thank you so much for all the uh, beautiful messages that we've been getting and uh, I think it's uh, given dad a new lease on life which has been uh, a lot of fun seeing him get excited about the chapter today he said to me oh Jamil this is a smaller chapter I might do some singing I'm like great dad let's do that so um, thank you all very much for your support and your love and uh, our blessings are with you as well uh, thank you all very very much